Jesus, he never fails. Jesus, he never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Oh, Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. I have tried and many never fail. I have tried and many never fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Won't you trust him? He'll never fail. Won't you trust him? He'll never fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, that is a true song, a very true song. Jesus will never fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus will never fail. And we want to certainly go before the Lord in prayer. And remember, men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily. Such as should be saved. Certainly, it's a good time to be saved. <laughs> uh, Any time is a good time to be saved. And uh, we certainly thank God that he has put it on our hearts and given us a mind to walk with the Lord so that we can enjoy the fruits of holiness. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we certainly do thank God for the nice weather that we're having uh, on the outside. And we are certainly encouraged by uh, uh, the change in the season. This is one of my favorite seasons as far as summer coming up. And uh, I know spring will be over soon and then we'll come into summer. Uh, I don't like to think about what happens after that, but you know, I'm gonna stay in the here and the now. <laughs> so we certainly thank God for that. And I thank God for each and every one of you being here in our midst. And we certainly do praise God for you. Uh, is there any other prayer requests? If there's any other prayer requests uh, we can let it be made known now as we uh, get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. Remember Sister Priscilla in prayer that the Lord will touch her body, all our bereaved families and, and everyone in every walk of life. Uh, also to remember um, our daycare inspection is on to, uh, Friday, uh, Friday at 10 o'clock, so be praying, amen everything will come together, that everything will work out just fine. Hey Amen. I, I, I ain't a doubting man, but you know, I want things to work out. <laughs> so let us pray on that wise, and as we, uh, you know, endeavor to do the will of the Lord, uh, let all things be done decently and in order. So as we get ready to go before the Lord, we want to ask the church to stand. Amen. And let every heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do praise you and thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for having blessed us and watched over us and kept us, even unto this very hour. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to cover us with your blood, protect us from danger, seen and unseen. Lord, we don't take your protection for granted. We don't take the blood of Jesus for granted, Lord. We thank you. We don't take the angels that are encamped around about us day and night, Lord, that keep watch over us for granted. We don't take your great mercies for granted, Lord. We know that you are faithful, that you are righteous, and that you are holy. And now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless our service on today, that you open up our hearts and our minds. Draw us in, Lord. Draw us nearer and closer unto you. Lord, you feed us in the name of Jesus. Touch the heart and the mind. Grant the door of utterance 
Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. As we um, are moving forward, uh, and we've been talking about uh, spiritual warfare, and we want you to go back with us over to uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number six. Ephesians chapter number six. And we certainly praise God and thank God uh, that he is mindful of us and has given us this armor. And um, because I want to kind of move forward, um, I normally give a lot of background information, but um, and that'll slow me down. <laughs> but uh, we know that, that, that God wants us to be empowered. He wants us to be strong. And, and we're dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. And the only way to defeat the enemy is to put on God's armor, put on the whole armor of God. And that armor that God refers to uh, relates to uh, seven different pieces of that armor. Uh, last week we talked about truth. Uh, this week we want to talk about the breastplate of righteousness. And notice verse 6 and 14, it says, Stand, therefore, having your loins gird about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. And that's what we want to focus in on tonight, uh, the breastplate of righteousness. And uh, when you talk about a breastplate, uh, the breastplate, uh, it's covering, it's covering um, the vital organs, it's covering the heart, and um, and it's 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 wise, or it was the revelation of God to give Paul that, talking about the breastplate of righteousness, because uh, the the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God, uh, is done from the heart, is done from the heart, and if we were to go to a working definition of righteousness, it would literally be conformity to the divine will of God. That's what righteousness is in a nutshell, conforming oneself to the divine will of God. Uh, remember what uh, Paul, when he had preached or taught, he said, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's righteousness. It, it deals with uh, behavior. It deals with one's conduct. And uh, he said, be not conformed, but be what? Transformed. Let your, and what transforms you is the word of God, is the word of God, God's commands that are in your heart. That, conform, that, that, that transforms you. Be not conformed, but be transformed and by the renewing of your mind. And when we think of breastplate, breastplate uh, 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 guards the heart. It guards the vital organs. With God, your vital organ is your heart. You know, you can be lame, crippled, uh, but you can't be crazy and make it into heaven. <laughs> you can't. You got to have the right appetite to make it into heaven. Your mind has to be right because God judges the heart. Amen. Out of the heart proceeded the issues of life. Amen. That proceeded the issues of life. God, God wants you to protect your heart. And that's where righteousness is performed. It starts in the heart. That's why he said, be not conformed, but transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, as, as the renewing of the mind, why your mind has to be renewed. Um, but um, I don't want to get into that. Well, maybe I should while I'm here. Um, the scriptures, uh, Pastor Doug, will you read for me? I hope, I hope to be able to pick it up on um, 
uh, on our speaker. I'll check it out later on today. And if not, then I have to do something different. <laughs> but we thank God for our virtual audience that is uh, tuning in with us here on today. You're not, and I thank God that uh, you're here. But uh, in, in Romans, uh, the reason why our heart has to be renewed, uh, uh, Romans um, chapter, uh, I'm for, forgive me, I'm talking about Psalms, uh, the, the 14th division of Psalms, uh, verses 2 and 3. Psalms, verses 2 and 3. Yes. The Lord looked down from heaven mm -hmm. on the children of men. Yes. To see if there were any that did understand and seek God. Mm -hmm. They were. They are all gone aside. Yes. They are all together become filthy. Mm -hmm. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Not one. There's none that doeth good. God looked down. He was searching, and notice how that scripture says that. God was seeking uh, and looking for those that were doing right, but he didn't find any. He didn't find none that were good. In other words, he didn't find none that were righteous according to his standard. God establishes righteousness. And the reason why people aren't righteous is because of, of their mind needs to be renewed. Uh, their, their deeds and their actions are evil. Amen? Uh, read that verse again, those two verses again. The Lord looked down from heaven yeah. upon the children of men. Now notice, God looked down upon us. Read. To see if there were any that did understand and seek God. Now, the reason why people in general aren't righteous because they don't understand or nor do they seek God. Because uh, 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 in order for an individual to become righteous, they have to seek God. They have to get an understanding of God. It goes hand in hand. You can't be righteous and, 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 and not understand God. In other words, you can't be a righteous person and not have a knowledge and an understanding of God. Amen? All right, read. They are all uh huh. They are all together become filthy. Yes. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. God, God, God says there's none that doeth good. No, not one. Then go over as we lay in this foundation to uh, Isaiah 64 and verse number six. Uh, I'm starting to feel the Holy Ghost. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, we warming up. <laughs> uh, Isaiah. Uh, 64 and 6. My God, my God. Mm -hmm. 64 and 6? Yes. But we are all as an unclean thing. Uh, now notice, Isaiah is describing it according to the will of God. We are all unclean. We are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Read. And all our unrighteousness, now, no. all our Mm -hmm. Are as filthy rags. Now notice, everything that I do by myself that I call righteous is as filthy rags before God. Amen. It's, and those those filthy rags refer to uh, the the the. Uh, let me. How can I say this? The 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 napkins of a menstruous woman, and that's that's how he's connecting that. Uh, uh, and uh, he's saying our righteousness is as that. Amen? That's how God looks at our righteousness. So we can't go about to establish our own righteousness. We've got to go about to establish the righteousness of God. Amen? All right, read. And we all do faith as a leaf. Uh-huh. All right. Now, let's go back. Let's go back. Thank you, Lord. I want you uh, to turn with me uh, now to the book of, of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter number six. And I, I, wanna, I wanna lay this as a foundation, and give you some background. That when you're thinking about righteousness, and, and, and Paul uses it as a breastplate of righteousness, 
and he's using it as, as a symbol of warfare. Uh, with God, uh, you have to walk in his ways and conform to him if you're going to fight in a battle of warfare. Because uh, the enemy, he will attack you. And if you don't conform to the righteousness of God, he will overcome you. He will overcome you. And uh, in the Old Testament, it focused in on, I gave you the definition of righteousness. It focused in on the, the conformity to the divine will of God. And then Jesus, he picked that thing up, and especially in the book of Matthew, when he talked about the Beatitudes. And uh, uh, he gave a deeper revelation of what righteousness uh, is and as, as far as our conformity. When you look at righteousness in, in, in its totality, it deals with one, uh, uh, right feelings. And I'm going to explain this. Right feelings, right motives, and right actions. When God uh, is dealing with righteousness, he's dealing with the total person. And 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 in in the what what caused when Jesus said that your righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, he was talking about our righteousness exceeding uh, the Pharisees in that our motives are right, our our feelings are right, and our actions are right. Uh, in other words, the the, the Old Testament. Uh, the Pharisees and they went about to do things, but uh, and and to call themselves right. They gave alms. They 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 did deeds uh, on the outward appearance, you know, to to act like they were righteous and holy, praying in the synagogue, uh, uh, on the streets and in the marketplaces, uh, uh, having a form of godliness, but 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 inwardly their motives weren't right. Their, 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 their feelings weren't right. They, they, they didn't, uh, 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 even though they had the right activities, it's good to pray in it. Uh, it's good to seek after God. It's good to give. But, but what God calls right, you got to give out of the right heart. You got to give out of the right spirit. Amen. You got to, you got to uh, uh, give out of the right actions. Amen. God judges the heart. And, and that's what uh, Jesus, uh, he was bringing to the table. When you're looking at righteousness, it goes deeper than someone wearing a long suit and a collar or, or having on the right dress and, and wearing the right clothes and saying the right words. Uh, notice what Paul said. Paul said that, that if, uh, though, if I give my body to be burned and have not charity, uh, it profiteth me nothing. Uh, I can make a sacrifice. And if, if I'm making that sacrifice and I don't have the right attitude, I don't have the right feeling, I don't have the right motive, uh, what's your motive? Uh, why are you doing what you're doing? What you, why are you saying what you're saying? Uh, then then yeah, I might as well have kept all my money. I might as well have not done it. Amen. I've got to, I've got to know what God calls right. Uh, and, and, and you got to understand that what God calls right, he's dealing with your, your, your motive. Amen. He's dealing with your feelings. Uh, and then he's looking at your actions. Amen. And when I'm talking about God is dealing with your feelings, he's not talking about, well, uh, how you feel about doing right, but are, are you doing right with the right feeling? Amen. Is your, is your attitude right? Amen. God, God judges your attitude. Amen. You got to look at your attitude being right. You can give somebody uh, uh, five dollars and 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 not have the right attitude and and negate your blessing because your attitude ain't right. You may ball it up and throw it at them. Huh? You gave it to them, but you did it with the wrong attitude. You did it with the wrong motive. Uh, there was anger in your heart. Notice. But God says he he wants you to be a, he, he 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 wants you to be a cheerful giver, amen. The attitude, amen. That's righteousness. If you're gonna give, give with the right attitude, 
Amen. If you're going you to serve God, serve him with the right attitude. Why did the children of Israel perish in the wilderness? They murmured and complained. Amen. God don't, God ain't calling. You can do, you can offer him a sacrifice. Huh? But if you're murmuring and complaining, he tell it stinks. Huh? He don't want it. Amen. Forget about it. So, so when you're talking about righteousness, doing God's, doing it God's way, you got to take the totality of the picture uh, under consideration. Am, am I doing it uh, uh, with the right motive? Uh, am, am I doing it the right way? Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and am I doing it uh, 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 with the right feeling? Amen. So in Deuteronomy then, chapter number 6 and verse 25. I mean, I'm sorry, not 25, but verse, yes, 25. And it shall be our righteousness mm -hmm. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Now, uh, righteousness then deals with a thought of obedience. Amen? Obedience to God. Notice what it says. It says, if uh, uh, it shall be our righteousness. Notice, it shall be our righteousness. And then there's that big conjunction. What is that big conjunction? If. If. Amen? If. That, that, that can destroy a whole lot of stuff. Amen? If. Notice what he says. If we what? Uh -huh. If we before the Lord our God. Right. If we observe to do all these commandments. You gotta observe to do all of God's commandments. Amen. You gotta observe to do them all. Uh, uh, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. Uh, 99 and a what? Half won't do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, uh uh. Hold that, hold that scripture there, Pastor Duck. I'm going to work on something real quick. And, and just uh, go briefly over to uh, the book of uh, 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 St. Matthew, chapter number 6. Hallelujah. Y'all forgive me. Uh, no, nah, I want y'all to forgive me. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, we got we to gotta go over the scriptures. All right, uh, 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 six and one. What does it say? Take heed that you do not your alms before men. Uh huh. To be seen of them. Yes. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Now notice, he told them because he's looking at their motive. Why are you doing what you're doing? Take heed that you do not your giving. That's your alms, huh? Before men, right? Otherwise, you have what? No reward from your Father in heaven. And the reason, one of the reasons why we come to this scripture is, I want you to look at uh, not just of the giving of the alms, but I want you to look at the principle of the thing. The principle of the thing. The principle of the thing is, is doing it the right way. Amen? Doing it God's way. Doing it the right way. Now, I want to say this. That, that, that you can do what's right and, and not do it at the right time and it be negated. You follow me? You can do what's right but not do it at the right time huh? and, it, and it reap you no benefit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 Job, he, he, he put it out there. He says, there's a time. No, Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry. There's a time and a season. Amen. For all things. You got to know what time it is. You got to know what season it is. Uh, and you got to know when to do it. Uh, not only do you have to do it with the right motive, 
Huh? But you also gotta, gotta be able to rightly divide the will of God or the word of God and do the right thing. Huh? At the right time. If you don't, you, 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 it, it won't be the will of God. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. And, and just think about it. Uh, uh, to do the, do the right thing, we should have it in our minds to want to do the right thing at all times. Am I right? Uh, that's, 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 uh, uh, if you think about when he said put on the breastplate of righteousness, he's talking about putting it and wearing it as a garment. Amen. Something that you should wear at all times. You should be focused in on what God calls right at all times. Amen? You should be asking yourself, even when you're uh, uh, dealing with conditions and situations, you should be saying, Lord, am I doing the right thing? Then you also should be saying, am I doing the right thing at the right time? Amen? It makes a difference. Hallelujah. It makes a difference. So uh, let's go back over to Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Because you know, you got, you, you got different circumstances, different situations come up. And even, even God, he deals with us uh, 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 differently. Huh? Now, when I'm, when I'm young in the Lord, I'm a baby, if you allow me to say it this way, God will extend me more mercy before he gets at me. Huh? And as you grow in God, he'll tighten up the rope. Amen? He'll tighten it up. Huh? So, so notice, even God uh, handles us huh, in, in righteousness uh, uh, at different times in different seasons huh, and, and, and deals with us differently. Amen? Uh, our individual that 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 uh, uh, the Bible talks about that is uh, uh, the Bible talks about and tells us that when uh, uh, him that that uh, uh, don't do right him that's not uh, uh, and young in the Lord they'll be beat with shoe stripes huh? but them that know to do good and do it not huh? they'll be beat with many stripes. You follow me? Different, different uh, 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 punishments for different occasions. Amen? And, and that's what we've got to uh, come to understand when it comes down to righteousness. Righteousness is deep. You've got to know God's will, uh, period, and desire to do the will of God, period. But you've got to know how to maneuver in different circumstances and different situations as God would maneuver uh, in different circumstances and different situations. Amen? Even with your own children. Uh, uh, maybe your 12-year-old may be cussing you out. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You follow me? You ain't going to turn around and kick them out of the house. So you got to get out of here, drag up your clothes, you know, uh, wow, because uh, uh, they're still young. They're, 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 they're minors, even though, uh, you know, uh, I'm just saying, uh, the right thing would probably be for them to go. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> but, but you ain't going to put them out. <laughs> you know, because you're dealing with them according to where they are. Uh, but now you let that fellow or that woman get up there at about 2018, Huh, coming up in your house, doing whatever, cussing you out, telling you off. You won't be saying, well, the same door lets you in, it's the same door lets you out. Huh? And, and you deal with them a different way. Amen? Huh? Because the circumstances is different. The situation is different. Amen? So, so, so that's why we've got to know righteousness. Huh? We've got to be led by the Spirit of God so that we can be able to do things that are right uh, in the sight of God uh, when the need arises. So, so righteousness really deals with your relationship. 
Hallelujah. You got you to gotta have a relationship with God to be able to walk with God. Amen. Uh, that's, that was one of the things that, that, that really plagued Adam because he, he, he committed that sin and he lost his relationship. Uh, and and, and uh, he's, he backed up on God. Uh, he backed up on God. When you ain't walking in righteousness, you'll back up on God. Amen. You'll, you'll, it'll affect your relationship with God. Those that are walking with God, uh, they want to meet up with God. They, they want to, they desire, they have an appetite for God. Amen. Hallelujah. As the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Amen. But, but if I ain't walking right, I'm walking not deed and sloop foot. Amen. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to meet up with God. Amen. I don't want to see God uh, like, like I ought to want to see him. It makes a difference. Amen. It makes a difference. So, so, that, so that verse in Deuteronomy, chapter number 6 and verse 25, what does it say? And it shall be our righteousness uh -huh. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. Now note, he said it shall be our righteousness if we obey God's commands. Who determines righteousness? God. And it, it is it's imputed unto us if we obey. Amen? Uh, I can't do it my way because my way is as filthy rags. Amen? And if I'm going to do it God's way, I've got to seek after him. Hallelujah. Amen? you got to seek after God to find out what God calls right. Amen? You gotta cry out after it. Amen. And 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 an individual that 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 seeks after God has to really, like I said, maintain a relationship with him. Amen. Now, let's go over uh, uh, to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. I want to go to Psalms. Number one. Then after that, I'm going to go right to the teachings of Jesus. But I, I want to lay this foundation. Man, I'm going to have to get me a fan. <laughs> uh, the book of Psalms. Because I want to I want to put this thought. I want to put this thought of righteousness in your mind. Psalms. Number one, verse number one. What's it say? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, a righteous person doesn't walk in the counsel of ungodly people. And that word walk there means you don't live by what ungodly people advise you to do. You don't live by it. That's what that word walk means. You don't live by it. And if you don't live by it, God says you're blessed, happy, peace is upon you. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Read. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Huh? Nor stand in the way of sinners. Not, now notice that, that your lifestyle does not uh, uh, prevent sinners to want to get saved. You don't stand in their way. In other words, you allow your light to shine. Uh, you uh, become the salt, amen, of the earth. Y'all with me? Read. Nor sit in the seat of the scorner. Then, then you don't sit around backbiting and talking about people. Amen. Now, now, now that's righteousness. <clears throat> that's the way of righteousness. Because, because it's God's it's God's commandments. It's God's word. Now, notice in that scripture. Did you finish reading that part about standing in the way of sinners? Read. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, uh -huh. nor standeth in the way of sinners, uh -huh. nor sitteth in the seat of the scorner. Now notice, that individual is an individual who's not walking in the way of righteousness, right? Notice, at first, they were walking, 
Right? And, and they got caught up in ungodly situations. Then it stopped their progress. Now they're standing. You follow me? And then uh, at the end, they're sitting. What it, what it was revealing is that it's a steady decline uh, in the individual's activity with God. When an individual doesn't walk with God in righteousness, doing it God's way, it's a steady decline. Huh? It's a steady decline in their lifestyle. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. Now notice, he said, he said, uh, read. But his delight uh -huh. is in the law of the Lord. Now, if one's delight is in God's law, wherein righteousness is kept, Righteousness is revealed. Huh? And if you make that your delight, your happiness, your joy, read. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, that's that transformation of the mind right there. Huh? If you want to be righteous, you've got to allow God to transform your mind. Amen? Hallelujah. Let him establish his will. Let him establish his way in your heart. Huh? And, and your motive has to be right. Your desire has to be right. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and your actions have to be right. Thank you, Lord. Read. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water uh -huh. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Now, when, when your season comes, you'll, you'll be able to bring forth they're, they're, you'll have strength enough to bring forth. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, read. His leaf also shall not wither. Uh -huh. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. A righteous person prospers uh, in whatever situation they're in. Why? Uh, wow, because they're on the Lord's side. Amen? Because God is backing them. Amen? Hallelujah. Read. The ungodly are not now, an unrighteous person is not so. Read. But I like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Read. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, uh -huh. nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now, 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 sinners won't be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous. Why? Because their, their, their deeds are evil. Because they're wicked. God makes separation. God knoweth the way of the righteous. He, he knows the lifestyle of the righteous because he declared it. Amen. He reveals it. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. All right. Now, let us, let us then now, let us focus now, now on, on, on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Y'all with me? Huh? We'll be done in a little bit. But let us focus on the teachings of Jesus Christ about righteousness. Y'all with me? Now, uh, uh, the Bible says in the book of, uh, we don't have to go there, but in the book of uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it talks about uh, 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 Jesus, he is our righteousness. Amen? He is our righteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is our righteousness. Now, let's go then uh, to Romans 1 and 17. That was that scripture that I was quoting about Jesus is our righteousness. That's 1 Corinthians 30 and 31, in case you're writing this down. But let's go over to Romans 1 and 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Uh -huh. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, uh, we're talking about righteousness as a as a as a as part of the armor of God. Notice the scripture. Let me get there. Let me get there. We said Romans one and what seventeen. 17. Notice it says therein is the righteousness of God. What? So so that scripture tells us that God's righteousness has to be revealed. You just don't know it. It has to be revealed unto you. 
And the only way it can be revealed unto you, you have to seek it. You have to have a desire for it. And you have to seek it and desire it by faith. Notice how you access it. It's revealed from faith to faith. Hallelujah. Then he says, the just, which means the righteous, uh, shall live by what? By faith. What is revealed to you? Uh, when God reveals righteousness to you, you have a responsibility to live it. If you don't live it, you'll decline. If you don't walk in it, uh, you'll, you'll, the enemy will get an advantage over you. The devil will take you out uh, if you don't walk in this revelation that God is giving to you. Y'all with me? Now notice what he says. He says, uh, for the, the righteousness of God is what? Revealed from faith to faith. Amen? God reveals what he calls right to you by faith. He that cometh to God must believe uh, that he what? That he is, that he exists. Uh, that he'll do what he said he'll do. Uh, then notice, and he's a rewarder. That's what we should hang our hat on. Uh, my God, I, my, 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 I'm about to blow my mind up in here. I want God's rewards. Uh, hallelujah. Everything that God rewards uh, an individual with is good. It's pleasant. You follow? Me? It's full of good fruits, full of mercy. Uh, hallelujah. I want the rewards of God. And notice God is a rewarder to them that what? You got to seek God. If you want to know Him, you got to seek Him. Mother Louise. Yes. So he acknowledges our faith. Yes. And he reveals the knowledge, I mean, the uh, righteousness into our faith from his faith. Yes. That's what that means. That's what that means exactly. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's why it's important for us to walk with God. Amen. It's like the Bible teaches, the Bible teaches this. He te it tells us, don't, don't, don't hang out. I'm paraphrasing. Don't hang out with ignorant and unlearned people. Uh, it tells you, hang out with people that are smarter than you. Uh, that know more than you. Uh, that's righteous, more righteous than you. Uh, why? Because if you do that, you'll learn their ways. Uh, you'll walk in their ways. But if you're hanging out with ignorant and unlearned folk, you'll learn their ways. Amen? And you'll uh, be ever learning, never knowing nothing. Amen? Same way with God. If you hang out with God, you'll be like Him. <laughs> hey! Kind of go shut. Hallelujah. Make that choice. <laughs> hey! Uh, I want to be like God. Huh? So I got to hang out with Him. I'll pick up His ways. Amen? I'll talk like Him. Uh, I'll love like Him. Uh, and notice, God said, I will withhold no good thing uh, from them that love me. I will hold no good thing from you. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's how he reveals it. Uh, righteousness got to be revealed to you. Earlier, I said, you got to always desire to do the right thing, but you also got to uh, know when to do the right thing. Right? And God will reveal both to you. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus, he being righteous and holy, huh? he, he, he uh, uh, knew when his time was. He said, my time ain't come yet. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And when it was his time, he offered himself up. He said, Father, time for me to go. Glorify me. Uh, with the glory that I had with thee before the beginning of the world. He knew what time it was. 
Now, if he'd have gave himself up early, huh, that would have been a mistake, wouldn't it? We'd still be lost. Huh? But because he knew the time, he knew the season, he knew when God called what was right, right to be obeyed. Huh? Oh, that's what we got to be. He left an example for us that we do what? Following his steps. Amen? See, now I got another scripture. Steps of a good man are what? <laughs> All right? Now notice then. All right, read. Then he says, for as it is written, what? The just shall live by faith. Amen. The just, that's another word for righteous. If you go live with God or walk with God, you got to walk with him by faith. Amen. And not, not by sight. Amen. And God calls that righteous. Huh? <laughs> When, when, when you put your trust in God, God calls that righteous. Uh, so you got to know that, 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 that the enemy, now listen, the enemy oftentimes tries to discourage us, right? Don't want us to trust God. Why? Because he knows that if you trust God, that's righteousness. Uh, and God will fight for you because you're trusting him. God will move things for you because you're trusting him. God will supply all of your needs because you're trusting him. Huh? Y'all follow me? Hallelujah. So, so is it a good thing to trust God? Now, that has to be revealed to you. Huh? That has to be revealed to you. Notice, I was talking to a young man, uh, probably was last week sometime, and he was telling me about all these wicked thoughts coming to his mind and, and how he's battling in his mind with those wicked thoughts and they was affecting their, his emotions and, and, and his behavior, you know? So, so you know, uh, I give him a simple answer. I said, well, man, you gotta change what you're thinking. Uh, I gave him some scripture, Philippians uh, 4 and 8. You follow me? And, and for me, it was clear as day because it's revealed to me that that is the victory. But to him, just because I said it uh, and gave him uh, uh, what he needed, he looked at me like I was strange. Why? Because it wasn't revealed to him. Follow me? You, you live by what's revealed to you. Uh, if we understood the 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 uh the necessity that uh what we need uh God's revelation we'd be here at this altar more often if we understood that 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 truly man does not live by bread alone huh, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God if that was truly revealed to us our actions would be different. Huh? We, would, we, would, we, would, we would tighten it up. Huh? We would study his word. Huh? We, would, we would pray. We would treat people better than how we treat them. Huh? We, we would shut our bed and shut your mouth. <laughs> we would shut our mouth. Huh? We would worship God in a different way. If we really understood uh, uh, that, that, that I need the revelation of God. Uh, why? Because I live by God's revelation. Uh, I need God's revelation. A lot of, let me say this. A lot of issues that we all have in our lives. I'm speaking to you now. <laughs> uh, 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 it's because we don't understand God. A lot of times uh, the fight is not with God, the fight is with our understanding. That's where the fight, that's where the issue is, because we don't understand him like we ought. God said, there's none that understandeth me. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And because of the lack of our understanding, there's the battle. Huh? There's the crux. There's the fight. But once I understand God, that 
that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. When I get that understanding, then whatever the enemy throws my way, it shouldn't have no effect. It shouldn't bother me. Why? Because I know it won't prosper. You follow me? Hallelujah. Y'all with me today? Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and when we get the revelation, when we get the understanding, that's how we make war. That's how we fight. That's how we're able to stand. Hallelujah. Now, if a, if a guy were to come up in here uh, uh, smoking cigarettes and reef up and, and, and offer you all that, you got to understand, well, if I smoke the reefer and, 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 and smoke all them cigarettes, you know, it's going to affect my salvation. Huh? You follow? And then you what? You'll leave it alone. Huh? So what's the difference between that and another test? When you understand huh, the, the will and the desires of God, hallelujah, if my God, my Holy Ghost is teaching now. If you leave the principles of the doctrine, uh, and go on to perfection. Uh, hallelujah. And, and moving from the laying on of hands and the baptisms. Uh, but move and go higher in the Lord. Uh, my God, we got to go higher, saints. Uh, what, what difference does it make? Uh, if, 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 if God can part a Red Sea, can he heal your body? Uh, if God can open that door, can he open this door? Is there anything too hard uh, for our God? And when we realize that, that nothing's too hard, we'll seek to do the, uh, what the world calls the impossible. Uh, because with God, what? All things. If you just what? Believe. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. So in order to get a revelation from God about his ways, you got to seek him. Huh? It ain't just going to come to you. You got to call him. Huh? You got you to bow down to him. Am I right? You got to study his word. Huh? And then not only that, you got to apply it. Huh? You got to apply it. God just doesn't give you knowledge and understanding just so you can house it. He gives it to you so you can apply it. Amen? Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Lord, help me to live by your word. Help me, Lord. All right? Let's, let's, let's move then on to what Jesus taught. Hallelujah. Wait, hold on, Pastor. Uh, uh, stay right there in uh, Romans 1 and 17. Read, read, just read 18 and 19. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now, when I said that God just does not give you his word. Now, this is a revelation for you not to perform it. That's what means holding the truth in unrighteousness. You can't, you know, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is what? Sin. Sin. So when you seek in God uh, about his way. God reveals his way to you and you don't do it. You're holding the truth in unrighteousness. You follow? Now, that's good for you to know. Isn't that good for you to know? Why is that good for you to know? So that when God reveals his word to you, you have it in your mind, I gotta do it. I gotta perform it. Now the enemy gonna say, uh-uh, you don't need to do that. You don't have to do that. But you rebuke the devil because it's been revealed to you that you gotta do it. So therefore it should not be a fight in your mind. You 
should what? Do it. Y'all with me? Read, Pastor. Let me just get through this. 19. Yes. Because that which may be known of God, which may be known of God is manifest in them. Uh-huh. For God has shown it unto them. Now, God knows when he shows you his revelations. Doesn't he? He knows when you have perfect understanding. Doesn't he? Huh? So then, when God reveals something to you, God expects you to act on it. My God, we've been coming to a lot of Bible classes. A lot of us in here have heard a lot of sermons. I ain't just talking about Pastor Quinn teaching and preaching. Y'all been hearing some teaching and preaching down through the years. Different speakers, different preachers. Uh, more eloquent than I am. Huh? Huh? And, and I, I've seen some of y'all shout <laughs> because God reveals something to you. Eyes twinkling. Hallelujah. That ad kind of old shout. Hallelujah. Shout the victory uh, in the name of Jesus. You don't think God ain't recording all that? <laughs> you don't think God is knowing all that? And then with all of that, you have a responsibility. Now you got to live it. Now you got to walk in it. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forsake mercy. Don't forsake truth. Don't forsake righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let's move on, Pastor. Uh, go to, I want to talk about Jesus now. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go over there to Matthew chapter number five. Now, in verse, I want to read, I want you to read verse number six. We, we said then that righteousness is the conforming to the divine will of God. That's the definition of righteousness. Conforming to the divine will of God, what God reveals. And we got to conform to it. Right? I got to become it. I can't yield my members unto unrighteousness. Amen? I can't, I got to conform to what God reveals. Be not conformed, huh? but be what? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You follow me? God wanted me to get rid of that word conform. He wanted me to put that word in transform. God wants you to transform. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, in, 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 in transforming, he wants you to have the right feelings. When you do things for God, you got to have the right feelings. Your motives have to be right. And your actions have to be right. And it has to be simultaneous in order for it to be acceptable with God. If my actions are right and my motive is right and I'm not doing it with the right attitude, it's all wrong. You follow? I'm going to say this too about that. That Bible says, reckon yourself dead <laughs> under sin. Now, I'm going to focus on that word, reckon. Sometimes you may be doing stuff going through the motions and not having the victory. Keep on doing it until you get the victory. Don't stop doing what's right because you ain't got the victory. Y'all follow me? Because then shall you know if you follow on to know the Lord. <laughs> the Lord tell me to teach, teach, uh, treat Minister Grady right. I can't stand him. I keep treating him right. Sooner or later, I'm going to not only stand him, but I'm going to fall in love with him. 
Huh? Because the path of a just man gets what? Brighter and brighter until a perfect day. Mother Louise? I dealt with somebody with a problem like that. Uh huh. And they thought it was just hypocrisy. They thought they were hypocrites. Mm -hmm. They came to me and talked to me about it. I said, no, you're not hypocrite because you're, trying, you're striving, trying to do something. Yes. I said, as long as you're trying to obey God, God is imputing that. <laughs> That's it. That's all righteousness is. Uh, it's, it's, it's God imputing it to us. We are not righteous of ourselves, but we're righteous when we follow after Christ. Huh? We live by his example. God imputes righteousness unto us. Pastor Doug? I also say if you want to practice love, start with somebody that hates you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hallelujah. And I'm going to add this to it. And you hate them. <laughs> Hallelujah, that's a good way, that's good practice, ain't it? Folk get on your nerves, the ones that get on your very last nerve. Huh? Turn around, start loving them, call them up. Say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We're talking about victory. Because when you understand it, then it's no longer a fight. When you receive the revelation, there's no more, it has no more power over you. Huh? You understand what I'm saying? The, the more you know about a thing, notice, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The more you know, the more peace you'll have. If you know that the enemy is defeated and God is exalted, then when he comes at you, you 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 know your reaction is different. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, if a man were to come through that door and I was by myself, I'd be a little nervous. Say, okay, well I'm gonna see what's going on. But if I got forty or fifty people with me, uh, I ain't gonna be nervous. Am I right? Huh? Thank you, Lord. And that's, that's how we should operate uh, in dealing with the enemy. We know that God is with us. We're not by ourselves facing the enemy. Huh? And the enemy has never won a battle over our God. Huh? And when we go into battle armed with that thought, huh, there's nothing that he can do. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. All right, let's go over there. Woo okay, we got a half hour left. Matthew chapter number, what did I say, six? Five, thank you. Five and six. What does it say? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, this is Jesus talking. He says, You are blessed if you hunger and thirst. After righteousness, God shall feel you. Jesus is teaching us this. Now, are you hungry for it? Are you thirsty for it? How's your appetite? Huh? Notice, your appetite has to be after uh, uh, what God calls right. Righteousness. Why? Because it protects you. Righteousness guards you. Righteousness is how you wage war against the enemy. You got to do it with the right attitude. got to do it with the right feelings, the right motive, and the right action. So if I realize that in order to be excess, successful, then I should go after the revelation of God, what he calls right. Nothing else should matter. Am I right? The thoughts of man ought not matter. The thoughts of God should matter. I'm going to go as far as say as this. The only thought that should matter and will matter is God's thoughts. Our thoughts don't matter. How I feel about it doesn't matter. 
But that has to be revealed to you. You may think that you can bring something to the table. <laughs> you may think that you're worthy in the sight of God. Huh? But that, that's not true. I was talking to you, I had a lot of conversations with a lot of different people. I had a conversation with a guy, and we were talking about worthiness and, 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 and unworthiness. And he said, I'm worthy, Frank. Huh? He says, I'm good, Frank. And you know, I'm like, man, you don't even know. Huh? Just that very thought, just that very statement. And because we were talking about God. And how God should be motivated and elevated. Amen? That God is righteous than us. Say, like, I'm righteous too, Frank. I'm not good. Huh? And then the word of God says, there's none good. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I can't compare myself to God and his righteousness. Mother Louise? I have a question. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. should always, according to the word, hunger and thirst after righteousness. Yes. But there are times when it gets more intense. It's like a drive. Oh, yeah. Is that when God is going to reveal something to you, or, or is, is it there? See, he sees you have more than me. What is that? When uh, God, God always wants to reveal something to us. Right. Always. That's, that's a constant. All right. All right? Now, when, when we get that drive, that means that we're into something that, that is vital, that God wants us to, to, to receive because it's necessary. So that's why you got to know what season you eat. When God puts upon you a, a desire to pray, more than a desire than you had yesterday, you ought to submit to that desire. Because God just doesn't show up just to have a conversation. Uh, and, and what he's going to reveal to you is, is going to be your next step. My God, with the God that we obey him. Listen to me. Amen? All right? Notice what it says. Uh, drop in down to verse number 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Now, notice the revelation. You're blessed if people persecute you for righteousness' sake. Because you're doing the right thing, you may think in your mind that I'm an outcast. <laughs> huh? That, that, that I'm an oddball. But God says you're blessed. And how can anybody curse that which God has blessed? Now, you've got to be cursed now, not for your own faults, but for what? Righteousness sake. Amen? Because you're doing what's right. People talking about you. People casting your name out as evil. Read, what does it say? Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. All God's resources belong to you. All God's blessings belong to you. Now, when you're being persecuted for righteousness' sake, and that's truly revealed to you, what, whatever they say to you or doing to you, would that matter? When you have that revelation, have that understanding, you'll say, well, this is what it's supposed to be. Wait, what's it say? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you uh -huh. and persecute you wow. and shall say all men are evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, that revile and say all manner of evil against you uh, for righteousness sake ain't just calling you black, nappy head. Uh, they going in on your tail. Uh, getting under your nerves. You follow me? Causing you to doubt. Fighting you with your mind. You follow me? Threatening, threatening, coming and threatening to take your house. 
sell your children, rape your daughters. You follow me? Stuff like that because you want to live holy. Casting you out as evil because you want to live holy. God said you blessed. <laughs> God said you blessed. He said, great, re I'm sorry, what he said? Rejoice. We got notice what he says. He tells you to do what? Rejoice. Then just go somewhere and praise your God. Rejoice. Amen? Read. And be exceeding glad. And be what? Exceeding glad. Exceeding glad. Now, that is another weapon. That's another weapon of warfare. You rejoicing and being exceedingly glad in the midst of your fiery furnace? All that moves God. When you realize that, you'll praise Him. You'll worship Him. Not just on Sunday, huh? but you'll, you'll worship Him and praise Him as soon as you get the news. <laughs> You lift him up. I'm going to be honest. This has been revealed to me about praise and worship is, 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 is another weapon of warfare. Rest assured that, that I get by myself and I start praising him. I start worshiping him. When that thought of the enemy coming upon me, uh, that thought that the attack is coming upon me, I just give me a song and start praising him. I start worshiping him. I start thanking him. I start quoting me some scriptures. Huh? That's how, that's how you fight. You can't let that stuff get in your mind. You can't let that stuff get in your spirit. You can't let the enemy get that advantage over you. Huh? He tells you to resist the devil. Stay back. That's how you resist him. Your praise is a weapon. You clapping your hands is a weapon. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Why do you think I clap my hands? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was, I was watching myself in a video clapping my hands, and some guy wrote, he said, man, he clapping like he anointed. <laughs> I had to laugh. They had that on Facebook. Thank you, Lord. He said, hey, he clapping like he anointed. Huh? My, my mind was on God. I was thinking about God. So yeah, I was anointed. Huh? When you got your mind on God, you expect the anointing, don't you? And it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks down the stronghold. When the enemy comes up against you like a flood, it's the spirit of the Lord that lifts up a standard against them. You got power to call on the spirit. You get power to walk in the anointing. Live in the anointing. Rejoice. Huh? And be exceedingly glad. Why? For great is your reward in heaven. Now you got a great reward in heaven. Our affections are set on things above. Not on these things of this earth. Now that's another revelation. When you get a revelation that 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 you don't you don't you don't live by the things of this earth, but you live in the kingdom of God, huh? That that frees you, cause you ain't dependent upon Uncle Sam. You dependent upon God, and why not be dependent upon God? We don't use God as a last resort. I'm sick. I think I'm dying. Well, I better pray. Huh? People do that. Use God as a last resort. That's foolish. Isn't that foolish? But, uh, but when people don't have that revelation, huh, they, they won't live by that. <laughs> Y'all with me? All right, read. Read, Pastor. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now, you are not alone in persecution. He said, for so persecuted the prophets that were before you. Read. Ye are the salt of the earth. Now notice, he said, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, uh -huh. wherewith shall it be salt? 
All right, drop down now to, to verse number uh, 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, notice what he said. Just Jesus talking in. He said, your righteousness got to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. What that scripture means is the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they, they went on the outward appearance. That's how they lived. They wanted to look good and not be good. Huh? That's what they wanted to do. Jesus, he took that thing and put it in the, in the context of not only do you have to look good on the outside, but you got to look good on the inside. Huh? That's what Paul had to struggle with. He was a Pharisee, wasn't he? He said, oh, wretched man that I am. When I wanted to do good, uh, what? Evil is there with me. Now, what he was saying is, when uh, you desire to do right, you're going to have a fight. Aren't you? Don't fool yourself. You have a fight. You gotta make yourself do right. <laughs> you do. Huh? Until it becomes a habit. Right? You gotta practice it. Practice holiness. Practice it. Make yourself do right. Bring your body, a body under. Uh, Paul says, for this cause, I bow my knees daily. Humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God. He'll exalt you. Huh? Now the, right, the Pharisees, they wanted to exalt themselves. They wanted to exalt their group. They, they, they wanted to be so righteous and holy they add it to the word of God. Putting yokes on people. Jesus got out about that, didn't he? He said, you put yokes on folks that you won't even touch with your own finger. You follow? Thank you, Lord. So, 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 your righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. How do you do it? You do it by doing things with the right motive, with the right intent, amen? And doing it the right way. They, they, they wanted to appear so much righteous that it's good to give tithes, isn't it? Isn't it good to give tithes? Yeah, it's good to give tithes. They tied, they tied, they tied in everything, all their goods. But Jesus said, you tied everything but you leave out mercy, you leave out uh, uh, righteousness, then he names some other things. Those things that should come from the heart. Amen? And they, they, were, they were tithing when they should have been helping their parents so that they could get a, a good amen in the church. When they looked at the roll, oh, so and so gave uh, five thousand dollars, and and his and his and they and they uh, family members was was left uh, hurt. Now don't get me wrong, if that was the ten percent, give it. But what Jesus was saying, they were giving more than what they should give, so that they can get their name on the bulletin board. You follow me? So they didn't get the pat on the back. Uh, instead of taking what they had extra and helping their parents. You follow me? We gotta watch it. We gotta do right. Am I right? With the right motive. Y'all with me? All right. Is that all of that verse, Pastor? All right, uh, uh, go to 
Matthew 6 and 33. And we're going to be wrapping it up. But first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. All right, God says, seek first whose kingdom? The kingdom of God, which kingdom you are in, if you're in the body of Christ. Amen? Seek first the kingdom of God. Read. And his righteousness. Now notice, he said, seek the kingdom and whose righteousness? His righteousness. God's righteousness. Amen. So in order to put on God's righteousness, you got to forsake your own. Amen? Amen? Remember, righteousness deals with right behavior. When God reveals something to you about how to go about doing it, you can't do it your way. You got to do it God's way. Because it's the only way that matters. If you just think about it. What I think about it doesn't matter. What you think about it really doesn't matter. But the only uh, opinion that really matters is God's. Isn't that a powerful revelation? Now, some people may argue with me about that. Say, well, my thoughts matter, Pastor. Well, <laughs> doesn't what I want to do matter? Doesn't what I want to do count? Not really. Don't it really? <laughs> Opinion that really matters is God. You can do what you want to do, but in the end, you won't hear him say, well done. Thy good and what? Any into the joy of the Lord. You'll hear him say, depart from me. <laughs> Whoa. I feel like every time I see, I quote that verse, I think about, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Cain, when God put him out of the garden, and he said, My, that punishment is too great for me to bear. If God ever said to me, depart from me, uh, Frank Quinn, I don't know what I'd do. Thank you, Lord, my God. I hope I repent. <laughs> Good. Hey, wouldn't that be too hard? If you ever heard your words from God? But now, on the converse, if you heard him say, well done, some of us be going, my God, thank you. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> my God. And that's what we want to hear. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Let's make that a reality. Let's make that what we hear. All right? Read, Pastor. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek first God's kingdom. And his righteousness. And whose righteousness? His righteousness. His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, Oftentimes, we lose the victory by going after other things. That distracts us. And I'm going to be honest. You could be going after God and, and something will pop up and distract you. Huh? That's natural. That's going to happen. If it hasn't already. <laughs> right? So that's power. You knowing that, then you, 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 you guard yourself. You heed the warnings. Because when you, when you do that, the Holy Ghost will warn you. And say, hey, what you doing? <laughs> huh? I was so full of zeal of the Lord when I first got saved, I wanted to know everything about all religions. And I met this, this one uh, Muslim brother, and he was talking with some great wisdom, great knowledge in my mind. I'm like, wow, this dude knows what's up. 
And I'm just freshly saved. And I said, man, give me your number. He gave me his number. I said, all right, I'm going to call you. And I'm walking away. Holy Ghost jump in. I said, what you going to do with that? Holy Ghost, what you going to do with that? I balled it up, put it in my pocket so I could throw it away. Because I was too holy to throw it on the ground. That's literally. <laughs> Oh, uh, I ain't called the dude. I ain't seen him since. That's the Holy Ghost. Follow? We got to follow the Holy Ghost. Leading of the Spirit. Amen? I want knowledge. I want understanding. I want wisdom. But I don't want ungodly wisdom. I don't want ungodly understanding. Amen? So, 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 so. You got to seek first God and his righteousness and then all these other things. It's going to be added unto you. You ain't got to worry about it. God will take care of you. Amen? All right. Any questions on the Bible study? All right. We thank God for you. Uh, we praise God for the opportunity to stand here before you and give God praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, oh on the corner. Tore it up. Yeah, right there. There you go. Praise him.